Hello, Leo. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Oh, you have a good reading today, Leo. Today, when I'm recording this and when I will post it, Venus has made her third and final square to Jupiter, kind of for this round, as she moves forward after her retrograde and as Leo move, or as um, Jupiter moves backwards just beginning his retrograde. So it's at about 15 degrees of Leo and Taurus. And this is an opportunity, Leo. So we begin with Ken, the torch, the divine spark. Paused, but dripping with anticipation. To spark and ignite below the light that aches into all the corners to illuminate. And then from the Southern Oracle, which I'm really enjoying, it's new for me, it's raining cats and dogs. Temporary intensity, surrender, this too shall pass, release, cleansing. And it's, I mean, this is the, the, the text is relevant, but this sense of things pouring in. Because then we have foxes also sort of pouring in. This is my quantum space card, right? The foxes as waves of possibility. And then below that is this 10 of swords. And this sense of this energy spiraling out of you. Leo. And then below that is the star. And then we have two more fives. So there's three fives here. Five of wands, five of pentacles, five of cups. Only the five of swords is missing. Maybe he's sort of unnecessary today. But this sense of change, that is unstoppable. And on the other side of it, we have the nine of pentacles. And if that wasn't enough, the Ten of Cups. So Leo, the, the Leo energy and Venus in Leo, talking about, about play, about creativity, about using resources in a creative and enthusiastic and playful way. So, you know, having a real concrete um, embodied sense that your ideas about lack are not correct. To have the idea that, that there will be resources if you allow it. That it is, that it is a, we do have to allow this. 
I don't like to use the word have to, but there is a necessity, a, a um, right, for the for there to be a vibrational match, a vibrational resonance. And this nine of pentacles, the ability to hold all of that. Because if you grew up feeling lackful, uh, either because you maybe did grow up uh, in poverty or, or where your, your family was strapped in a financial way, or it may have been, you know, a philosophy that your parents had. You know, that you had to work for things. That, um, you know, that resources were scarce. That money in particular was scarce. And there may have been other scarcities too. Sometimes if we, even if money is plentiful, but we have a scarcity of nurturing or love or affection, it can get displaced. Right? And all, all, you know, everything becomes scarce, including money. And this, this Venus-Jupiter square wants to challenge that. Because Jupiter is expansive. You know, and what's interesting is that he's passing over the very same territory during his retrograde that Mercury passed over when he was retrograde in Taurus earlier this year. 15, around 15 to around 5 degrees of Taurus. So this space of resources and actually, this sort of spans the first and second decan of Taurus, which are tra traditionally associated with the four and five, or I'm sorry, the five and six of pentacles. So the, the five, right, the sense of scarcity and lack, and then the six, which is more about balance and reciprocity and movement of resources. And then you get to the seven, which is, you know, about receiving things. And he's actually face up over here. So coming, coming into new relationship with that. And not in any need to, to hoard resources. This is about an understanding kind of through and through yourself that money and, and other stuff will arrive, will pass through if you, right, if you have this playful attitude about it. And so we have like a bird, right, that feeling of movement and lightness and beauty. And enthusiasm. And care. Right, this is also about care. About paying attention about being mindful. Um, about really seeing things, you know, really, you know, really seeing the plants and other foods that you eat, about, you know, taking care of your clothes and your home. Um, you know, not only does it spark joy, but do you care for it in return? There is the, that, that Six of Pentacles reciprocity. Not out of obligation. Leo isn't 
um, a sign of obligation, but of playfulness. So the perfect key that opens the lock. And then the queen bee. This, this sense, you know, she, all of the other bees, um, you know, she is cared for by, by all the bees in the hive, and she in turn gives life to the next generation. So change, man, we've got three fives so far. We're actually gonna run into one more a little bit later. A change in how you see things. And it's a permanent change. Once, once you have seen this, once you have accepted it, embodied it, embraced it, then it is with you. And you may wobble a little bit here and there as you go, but you'll never slip back wholly into the previous, uh, the previous way of seeing. Now this Three of Swords is not yours. You are this hermit and you are raising a light, right? Like putting a light in the window for others. For others who live in this space uh, of feeling deeply isolated, apart, undeserving, unworthy, broken, You are hanging out a light for these people. So that they might find their way into this space. But you're, you're sort of going first, Leo. And then we have the Ten of Cups again. And this time harmony, because you, you know, this this new view, this new perspective, this new philosophy is not only about you. Part of Leo's gift is that you, um, you, are a, uh, you are a torch, you are a bonfire that others can gather around to warm themselves. to come out of perhaps a frightening darkness. And this isn't really about you doing anything in particular, necessarily. I mean, you might. You might be doing something uh, around this. You know, maybe you teach people to grow their own food, perhaps. Or, uh, you know, there's some, some aspects that you, that you do in your life. But it's more about who you are. And this is a theme that's shown up in, in the last number of readings. This notion that when you, when you come into the space and you really embody it and live from it, walk your talk, then you are an influence on others even without doing or trying. The very fact of you creates change. And then perseverance, which today is coming out, I did. you know, I sort of, yes, <laughs> to, to perseverance as the seven of discs here showing up 
even within the reading as well as without. But it's more about this rising energy. And this kind of with the, the colors of the chakras here, with a rising unity right, or a rising um, connection between all of these energies. You know, as humans, we tend to, right, in order to really understand something, we break it down into pieces. And we like to categorize things. You know, give them names and, um, you know, perhaps give them borders. But the reality of it, right, is that all of your chakras intermingle. And there's this sense of a greater a greater interconnection, a greater communion. And that that then goes outward into other people. You feel more confident in engaging with other people and perhaps being more vulnerable and sharing your own difficulties, your own challenges, your own joys. You know, it's sometimes it can actually be difficult to share joy. Uh, especially if you, you know, if you're kind of surrounded by people who feel low and in the dumps. You might feel hesitant, right? And is it going to make them feel bad if I, you know, share this marvelous joy I've got going on? And maybe for a little while, and maybe you do, you know, maybe you're mindful about how exuberant you are, but don't hide your joy or your courage. Here we have valor. And the Seven of Wands is often about, you know, possibly defending yourself. But this card feels like you are, that you are leading, right? You have your wand and you are leading these other six people with their wands. And then the rainbow and right underneath, as if that wasn't enough, is the gatherer. And this is a gatherer who, right, who absolutely shares. Who, right, she's, she's a magnet for all of these wonderful things, but she doesn't keep them solely to herself. Right, she shares them because that Right? That's really what gives life and even stuff satisfaction. Is this sharing of things. That we both give and receive. Not necessarily from the same person. Um, I'm thinking what's popped into my head now is the movie Babette's Feast. And if you haven't seen it, go. It's marvelous. It's from a story by Itzhak Denison. And the character of Babette comes into a windfall. And she makes the choice to share it. Because, you know, that is, that is the call for her is to, to create something wonderful that can be shared by others. And this intention of hers transfers out into those people who, you know, actually come rather resistant. But they are enveloped in this 
energy of what she does. Right? This, this enthusiasm, this uh, desire that all people should feel as marvelous as you do. And there is a very out, right, an outgoing energy, the hunter. Not hunting for prey, but hunting for the magic. Um, hunting for for the, the places where, where things are stagnant or uh, where there is a, you know, a real pain or suffering in spirit and in the heart, right? The place where the curse is active. Place where the curse is active in order to dispel it, to break it. And I actually, I, this, this is where the, where the fourth five comes out. Um, I asked for a couple of clarifying cards. And actually, now that I look at it, there is technically a fifth five and a sixth, because this rainbow is a four and a one, and the curse is a one and a four. So there's five fives already in the reading. And that, I'll tell you, is a synchronicity for me. And then I asked for a little extra clarification about the curse. And what I got was the Hierophant, who in this deck has the infinity symbol, like the Magician, and the Ten of Wands, the Ten of Fire. So this, this hierophant energy of the as above, so below, as within, so without, that I think he shares with the magician. And that is, um, right, the hierophant is a teacher. Someone who brings the word of spirit to others. And then the ten of fire, you know, is about endings, about uh, finishing, about completion, the ending of the curse. And it's this curse, right, this feeling of lack that is certainly responsible for a lot of what is um, destructive in the world, the fear, the fear of not having or of being left out. So advice, four of wands, building the new, with whoever comes along, there may not, right, this may not only be two people, there might be a whole group of people. getting together and living in this new way. And underneath that is the Ten of Pentacles, and then the Lady of Fire with her torch, and actually the Six of Swords to take the torch. So we have the Devil here, but on the other side of him is you. Leo, you're going to stride right through this scene. You are not even concerned. You and your posse, your crew, you are going to, right, you're going to pass right through the scene and just 
gather up these two people that seem to be succumbing to this devil energy. You're just going to gather them up. And even behind you. Right? It's like you're you're passing through the scene and behind you is trailing this red thread. You know, which comes from the uh, myth of the Minotaur. Um, Ariadne gives Theseus a ball of red thread to find his way out of the labyrinth. And you are right, this is trailing behind you. You're, you're, you're carrying the ball, trailing it out behind you so people can follow. And then the Ten of Wands again, this time in full Phoenix form. And I feel like, right, I've, I've sort of, this has been a, a fast reading for me, but I, it all felt, right, I didn't want to pause too long. I didn't want to um, over-explain anything or put in any disclaimers, as I sometimes do. Because none of that stuff belongs in this philosophy. Right? This is the torch. All of this incoming possibility, all of the timelines and, and possibilities of change that live in the field, in that creator space. So I hope that you really embrace this, Leo, that you take up this torch. That you do, and whatever it is you need to do, you know, maybe it's a journey, maybe it's a practice you take up. Maybe it's just watching this video. To really absorb this message, this new way of being, and then move forward in it. And I'm excited to see what you create, Leo. What all of this change will bring to you and to the rest of us. I wish you all the very, very best, Leo. So long. I'll see you next time.